So on the uh, previous slides, we showed what we called a uh, time-dependent source or time-dependent signal or time-dependent wave and a distance-dependent signal. Time-dependent signal depends on time and a distance-dependent signal depends on distance. Well, a, uh, the E field and the B field in the electromagnetic wave are both time and distance dependent. And I've got a little video. If we were to just isolate either the E field or the B field in, in two dimensions, this is what they would look like. We've got a traveling wave. It's propagating in a particular direction with a specific velocity, and it's carrying energy as it goes. Um, as you can observe in this animation, the wave appears to be moving from the, the left to the right. And uh, you can kind of think of that as if there was a tiny surfer he'd get pushed along, you know, in, in this direction. Um, the general equation, if I want to represent either the E field or the B field in an electromagnetic wave, I have to use the general equation for a traveling wave. And uh, I'm going to just real quickly draw a, a, a three-dimensional axis. In electromagnetics, this is typically the, uh, sorry, this is typically the y-axis. This is typically the z-axis, and this is typically the x-axis. There's nothing sacrosanct about that. That's just what we commonly do. And the general equation for a wave traveling in the positive direction, positive z direction, is a of z comma t is equal to whatever the peak value of the cosine wave is times cosine of omega t minus beta z. If you look it up on YouTube or some other electromagnetics textbook, you may see it written as AP cosine of beta Z minus omega T. Uh, and that's not incorrect. Uh, you just have to remember that cosine of theta is equal to cosine of minus theta. It's an even function. Um, and so therefore, those two statements are logically equivalent. Um, and in this class, though, we'll tend to write it We'll tend to write the general formula of a traveling wave as peak times the cosine of omega t minus beta z. And if we wanted to, we could insert that plus minus phi in the end of that there. So the, the, the trouble with drawing pictures is that our waveform for either an E field or a B field is now dependent on two variables, x and t, right? Or z and t, depending on what spatial variable you want to use. And so it becomes a little harder to plot them in two dimensions. It's nice when we have videos, but we can't always have these videos. So a lot of times what we'll do instead is we will typically plot the traveling wave either as a function of position with time fixed or as a function of time with position fixed. So here what I've done is I've plotted um, a traveling wave as a function of position, meters, and I've plotted it for three different uh, va fixed values of time here. So I've plotted it for three distinct times. And you can see for each of these traces, this skinny trace and then the slightly darker trace and the slightly darker trace, um, indicated a dot on the graph that indicate, indicates the constant phase point. So what I'm saying is the distance from here to here in this graph is the same as the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here, constant point of phase. And we can see as time increases from t, from t equals 0 to t equals t1 to t equals t2, the dot is moving in the positive z direction, indicating that this is a positive traveling um, wave. So in summary, we're going to write a traveling wave moving in the positive z direction as a of z comma t is equal to the peak value times the cosine of omega t minus beta z. The variables that we use here are omega is equal to angular frequency, and that is measured in radians per second. T is time in seconds. Beta is called the wave number. 
and it's measured in radians per meter. And uh, Z here is distance, and it's in units of meters. Furthermore, there is a relationship between angular frequency and the spatial, or the um, angular frequency and the time between two successive peaks, and that is omega equals 2 pi over the period, which is the time between two peaks. And the corollary to that in distance is that angular frequency, sorry, um, wave number is equal to 2 pi divided by the wavelength, which is the spatial distance between two peaks. So here we have T is the period measured in seconds, and lambda is the wavelength measured in meters. Um, I would also like to point out that that's for a wave traveling from the left to the right. Um, if I am riding a wave traveling from the right to the left, I would write it as AP cosine of omega t plus beta z. And that's, uh, that's what we would have for a wave traveling in the opposite direction. So... So that provides us a handy way for determining the direction of a wave uh, that a wave is traveling just by looking at the argument of the cosine function. If um, if the signs are opposite, we have a uh, sorry. If the signs are the same, we have a wave that's moving right to left. And if the signs are opposite, we have a wave that's moving from left to right. And uh, now what I'd like to talk about is the rate at which this wave is moving. Since it's moving, it's got this uh, velocity associated with it, mu sub p, which is the um, propagation velocity. In It's measured in meters per second. It's really just how fast is it going. Is it slow or is it quick? we wanted to determine from the cosine function how fast this um, wave is actually propagating. And to answer this, I want to look at the dots that we've plotted on the traveling wave. The position of each of these dots is going to be given by the argument of the cosine function, which was omega t minus beta z. And it's constant in all cases, so we'll let, just let that equal t, uh, to some constant c. And uh, so that's the angular position uh, in radians of each of those dots, right? Omega t minus beta z. And um, velocity, mu sub p, is how fast something is changing position with respect to time. And if we've got a position function in uh, radians, to determine how fast something's moving, we just need to take the derivative of that. So uh, what we will find is that we would take the, prop, the derivative of omega t minus beta z is equal to c. We need to take the derivative of that entire function, and it'll tell us how fast this is going. And so that is d dt of omega t minus d dt of beta z is equal to d dt of some constant. And so the derivative with respect to time of omega times t is just omega, and the derivative of uh, beta times uh, z with respect to time is going to be beta dz dt. There was a minus sign there. And then the derivative of a constant with respect to anything is just uh, zero. So we see that here we've got uh, angular frequency. Here we've got wave number. That's rate of change of position with respect to time. So that is velocity. And so we can rearrange this 
and we can say dz dt is equal to omega over beta. And that's in radians per second. And that is phase velocity, or propagation velocity, mu sub p. So radians, or sorry, not radians per second, meters per second, right? Um, radians per meter divided, radians per second divided by radians per meter gives you meters per second, u sub b. Uh, 